And he already had push play. Okay, awesome. So we're prepared for a pool. And every time you do a pool, there are five steps to a pool and you have to repeat those same steps over and over again, okay? So the first step to a pool, uh, once you have the wheel spinning at about half speed, is to make an indent, okay? So this indent, I've already done it, but I'm gonna do it again and I'm using my right hand and my right index finger at 430 and I am pressing in at the base and it makes kind of this indent right down here at the bottom, okay? Or I also refer to that as a groove, okay? So you're indenting or grooving your clay, making a groove, that's step one. Step two is to hydrate the clay and your hands because if the clay is not hydrated and your hands are not hydrated, when you start to do a pull, it's gonna stick, it's gonna go off center and you're gonna have to start over again, okay? So I have hydrated the clay and I've hydrated my hands so that now when I touch it, it's not going to stick. Step three is to crab claw with your left hand and you're gonna put the crab claw at 430. The thumb of your left hand goes into the groove. Your index finger and middle finger of your left hand goes down to the bottom of the well and you start to pinch between your thumb and your fingers to pinch the clay. When you pinch the clay, you're gonna pinch it about a 16th of an inch, which is tiny, like a little tiny pinch, okay? So if you break up an inch into 16 parts, a 16th of an inch is teeny, right? And an eighth of an inch is just slightly bigger than that. Two sixteenths is an 18th of an inch. So somewhere between an 18th of an, an, 18th of an inch and a, excuse me, an eighth of an inch or a 16th of an inch. And I'm pinching and I'm lifting as I do that. And you'll notice that some of the clay rips off when you do that. That's because when you made the groove, the clay that you push off of the wheel head is really not stuck to it. It's just sitting there on the surface, okay? So that was step three. So I'm gonna repeat steps one, two, and three, and then I'm gonna do steps four and five. So I'm doing step one, which is making the groove. Step two is hydrating the outside and the inside and my hands. Step three was crab claw, put it in at 430 and pinch. Step four is lift. And you're gonna notice that that groove comes up the clay. And you're gonna notice that the clay is actually starting to get a little bit taller. And then when you get to the lip, you stop and you slowly open up your fingers, okay? If you don't open up your fingers and you ride off like this, your lip is really sharp and really thin like that because I didn't stop and open, okay? And it's okay, I could fix that, but it, I don't have to fix that. I can just not do that, okay? So to, pitch, uh, to fix that, I'm gonna compress the lip. And to compress the lip, I am now making a, I'm pinching the clay here. I'm not pinching it, I'm supporting it between my thumb and my index finger. And right here at 430, I am pushing down with my sponge right where my fingers are and I am compressing that lip. That is step five, okay? So let's go through those steps again just to make sure that you kind of have it and you understand what it is because these five steps are the same five steps that you have to do over and over and over again until you get the height that you want and then we can start shaping, okay? So step one, undercut and create the indent slash groove. Step two, hydrate. And my sponge, my sponge is already hydrated, so I'm just dragging my sponge and I'm not pushing in or out. I'm just dragging a wet sponge on the surface to hydrate the clay and my hands. Step three, crab claw, pinch. Now one thing you will notice that after about the second or third pull, my right hand will no longer be tall enough to put my thumb where the groove is. So then I will have to change the size of my hand by using my right hand. And I actually like to make calipers here. And now my right hand will be on the inside and my left hand will be on the outside. Or left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside. And I will pinch between these fingers. Instead of this, I'm doing this. As it gets taller and my one hand won't do it anymore. I can still do it for this one, so I'm gonna do it for this pool. 
So indent or undercut or groove, hydrate, crab claw, pinch, 430. 430 is right here. Three and six, 430 is right here. Elbows on my body. I'm pushing in, I'm pinching, and I'm lifting. And I keep my hands at 430 the entire time. And it's starting to get taller. And when I get to the lip, I stop and I slowly open up, okay? And then I compress the lip and that is step five. So step four is pinch and lift. Step five is uh, support and compress, okay? So those are the five steps, okay? And how do I know when I've got the right height for my bowl? Well, that is a very individual thing depends on what kind of bowl you want to throw, what shape of bowl you want to throw, how much content you want it to hold, all of that. It's a very individual thing, okay? But how I kind of gauge is the thickness of my clay. Okay, so currently my clay is about a half inch thick. It's about this thick, okay? I'm getting really close to the thickness of the wall that I want but the bottom of my clay down here, between my index finger on the outside and my index finger on my inside is about that thick, about twice as thick as the lip. So I need to do one more pull where I am compressing the bottom, but not the top. So as I come up, I'm gonna to start to let off on my pinch so that I'm pinching and I'm compressing and I'm making the clay thinner at the bottom but not at the top because I want the walls to be the same thickness. Currently they're fatter at the bottom and thinner at the top and I want it to be all the same thick. So I am making these adjustments mentally and physically. I understand what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. It's not a guess, okay? So this time I don't have to make such an indent, okay? Slight, slight indent, slight pinch. And then as I get to about halfway right here, I'm gonna stop pinching as much and there's not gonna be near as much groove. And so I'm not lifting, I'm not getting very much height and I'm not changing the thickness of the wall here midway to top. And then right there I open up and I compress, okay? And now my clay is the same thickness, bottom and top, it's a half inch thick all the way. Now I'm ready to start shaping. And that was probably about my fourth or fifth pull, okay? So one thing that you have to learn and you will learn as you throw is that the number of pulls that you do matter. If you do 30 pulls and you are getting this clay wet and hydrated 30 times, it is starting to lose its integrity. It's gonna get super soft and it's gonna fall apart, okay? It just does. Yes? Pools, I'm pulling it up, pull, P-U-L-L, -L. pull, pull, I'm pulling it up. Okay, good question, thank you. All right, so now I'm gonna start shaping. I wanna start turning this into a bowl. So it's just kind of a cylinder. This is what I tried to teach you in Ceramics 1. When you were throwing a cylinder, you were trying to throw a mug, right? And then you could shape your mug. This is kind of your common